South Africa's Minister of Finance, Pravin Gordon, as you know, has just tabled the country's 2011 budget before Parliament. While job creation re uh, remains a recurring theme, the Minister has also given some clarity on jobs funding and wage subsidies. He's also announced incentives for various sectors that should, in his view, absorb labour. The budget further provided a respite for pensioners. Joining us now to discuss the budget's socio-political influence uh, is Mweletsi Mbeki, who's the uh, deputy chairperson of the South African Institute of International Affairs in Cape Town, Crispin Sun, the executive director of corporate affairs at Old Mutual. Later on, we'll have Lumkile Mondi giving us his view. Mwelezi, let's start with you. State of the Nation address a fortnight ago, jobs, jobs, jobs. Budget address today, jobs, 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 and the tangibles of how that's to be done. A jobs fund and also a wage subsidy. Your views? Well, I, I think this is a very good thing. Uh, not just for South Africa, you know, the emerging consciousness of an African government mm. being conscious of the need mm. uh, for people to work, to, for, for job creation to happen. And most importantly, uh, what I thought was very new about the finance minister's statement was a huge emphasis on entrepreneurship and on yeah. entrepreneurs. Yeah. He repeated this over and over again in his speech. So I think that's a huge progress that we are seeing uh, in South Africa, and I hope it will rub off a little bit on other African right. governments to realize the importance of entrepreneurs in their own countries. Christmas on your views on the uh, issue around jobs and the fact that um, so much money, nine billion towards a jobs fund and uh, five billion allocated or disbursed over three years for a youth employment subsidy. Yes, we, we were all waiting with a fair amount of anticipation to see how consistent the budget would be um, supporting the uh, President's uh, uh, remarks around job creation. And I think a few things that stand out for us was that the budget very adequately addresses the way in which jobs would be incentivized and funded. I think the, the one way is the 9 billion rand fund. The challenge with those funds typically are they become hugely inefficient and bureaucratic. And what was very interesting was that the minister not only dealt with it through the 9 billion rand jobs fund, but through a whole range of other initiatives. Um, the investment that they had pledged in the national student um, uh, 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 funds for, for higher education, the investments they pledged towards further education and training was not only about jobs, but specifically spoke about this uh, term the minister used today, which is he, re he referred to as higher, inclusive, um, and sustainable economic growth. So I think he, they've started addressing jobs not only through a set of incentives, but through all the other enabling factors through education and skills building right. as well. Um, I think the second big thing that stood out for, for me certainly was the fact that the minister, the medium term budget framework um, is a multi-year framework and uh, the minister has to operate within certain uh, deficit reduction targets and he seems to have balanced that very adequately. Okay, our naughty latecomer, you saw him creeping in earlier on. Lumi Lamondi, thanks for joining us. Uh, good evening. The jobs fund, how is that going to work tangibly? We see how much money is allocated, but what is it supposed to do? Well, firstly, I mean, the, 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 the biggest challenge is the budget. We're throwing a lot of money into the system. Mm. Um, we're throwing lots of money to the system without the necessary uh, expertise, support, etc. So therefore, you know, the job fund is there. The IDC, as you had, to announce a 10 billion rand fund. So all these funds, it's a whole lot of money, yeah. but the constraints in the economy aren't there yet for us to be able to do the things that Mulis is talking about, about entrepreneurship, because we need to create that enabling framework for entrepreneurs. So that when they come to the IDC, for example, yeah. they don't get a move from pillar to post, that they come in, they present the business plans, and we give them money within the specified period because they die. So therefore, on the job fund specifically, is that we still need more detail in terms of how it's going to be dispersed, right. um, whom are we targeting, given that the IDC has got its own 10 billion rand as well. In addition, the 20 billion rand incentive, which is there for the productive sector, which also even right. there, the detail was lacking the budget. So we'll hear from uh, Minister Rob Davis right. when he comes at the detail around that. We'll discuss those issues a little bit further. Businesses likely response. I mean, the aim through this issue of the youth employment subsidy is initially to create around 178,000 jobs because obviously 
obviously their income will be partly subsidized. Will business respond to this? Well, business will respond if, they, if the, um, the environment framework is correct. At the moment, we're all very much aware. Two weeks ago, the mining in Daba, it was very, very clearly articulated by, uh, by the Anglo-American CEO what the issues were. We know that the issue in the economy. For me, I still want to see government. I'm very happy with the budget. But I think the budget must have an, a very a positive and enabling environment for businesses to succeed. So therefore, the logistics sector where business is putting about 800 billion rand in the next three years on the whole infrastructure sector, where in fact we could do with half of that if we're smart enough to bring the private sector into the space so that they can take the risk with us mm -hmm. and we use that 400 uh, billion rand to address the issues around education, which are there, but we can do more in terms of infrastructure, bring back agriculture and see what we can do to get those jobs that we want. So I think the innovation is still lacking in terms of thinking out the box, in terms of uh, addressing head on the challenges that this economy faces. Mwene Simbeki, you've just mentioned the importance of supporting entrepreneurs entrepreneurship and SMEs, for instance. We've heard that 20 billion will be uh, allocated to the productive economies, such as manufacturing, 10 billion to support the industrial policy action uh, plan, and then an amalgam, which comes to about 1 billion rands for SMEs. Do you lament the fact that that's not <laughs> enough? Well, th this, this has been a controversial issue for many years about the support that SMEs receive in South Africa. Uh, and it is for real. I set up a construction company myself uh, from scratch with uh, three or four other people. And I know how difficult it is in this country to get money. Unfortunately, when you go to, uh, to the, the structures that are supposed to, set, to help a small uh, company uh, to, to, to source the help that it's, uh, it's supposed to get, uh, you end up first, you, g you get asked to bring your audited accounts. Now, that costs a lot of money for a small company, uh, and so it starts from there. So I would like to see the bureaucracy simplified. Uh, I would like the point that, that, that Lumkile is making, which is that, you know, it's the how you do this. Yeah. You, you can throw a lot of money into problems in South Africa seemingly has a lot of money to throw at problems. But actually, you may need less money if you fine tune the, your ways right. of doing things. Crispin, your views on this one, I mean, some money towards enterprise support at Kula, some money towards a microfinancing fund, those sorts of things going towards SME development, and yet everybody is in agreement that on average, over 80% of jobs will come from the small and medium enterprise sector. Is there a disconnect here? Yeah, and, um, I, I don't really think so. Um, if, if I could say, one's got to look at this a little bit more holistically. I think giving, providing funding through agencies who then use the money efficiently and effectively to enable small businesses, one part. The second part is creating an enabling environment. The minister spoke very broadly and also very pointedly at times on infrastructure, crea on infrastructure growth, sustaining um, the infrastructure spend in South Africa to enable larger business. If, they c if, that, if that works in tandem with a very efficient procurement uh, system and a tender process, and that works in tandem with um, skills development process, those are the factors that also help enable small enterprises. It's not only access to capital, it's access to skills and access to economic opportunities, which is often brought about through government spend on infrastructure. So I think on the whole, the, uh, the, the minister is trying to address a range of issues. Uh, uh, the one issue that I would raise uh, some concern about is the fact that there has been some comments around the, in the efficiency or the level of efficiency of some of these funds, the rate at which it, it, it makes funds available um, and the way it enables people who are recipients of those funds. The minister didn't say much about driving efficiencies and checking efficiencies. What he did speak about is making sure that the procurement processes around state tenders are, 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 are fixed up, which allows small businesses to participate. Right. I would absolutely agree with Moletsi that taking the bureaucracy out of it has been a constant challenge. Right. Putting in a good governance framework on the one end, but 
also making sure that it's not bureaucratic and excluding people from participating in this economic opportunity. Lungi Lamonti, despite what we see as very uh, paucity in terms of funding for SMEs, we do have 10 billion, as I said earlier on, for the Industrial Policy Action Program and 20 billion for manufacturing that you referred to earlier on. Mm -hmm. Will these allow for SME participation in the supply chain? Will these programs allow for job creation? Because broadly speaking, the target is 5 million jobs within the next 10 years. Will an amalgam of all of these, about 30 billion rands, address the problem? Well, the reality of our economy at the moment, if you look at the tech stock of our economy, it's an economy that's got household debt uh, of over 70%. Uh, it's an economy uh, where the private sector uh, has been squeezed. If it's not squeezed, uh, if you talk about construction sector, which is very labor intensive, uh, they haven't been paid. Uh, they're being investigated for, uh, for, 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 uh, for colluding in tenders. So th there's a space here to create some, some opportunities. However, as I said earlier, that with the 20 billion rand to the productive sector, we have to do it smartly. We do it smartly. Uh, it's likely to benefit the bigger guys because they are aiming, I think, at, at, at companies that uh, that are looking between 200 and 900 mm -hmm. uh, million rand, which is looking really at a bigger at, 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 at bigger companies, and therefore those companies, some of them have got lots of cash at the moment. They don't know how to use it because the framework is not correct. Therefore, the issue around the framework, the issue around the state, looking at itself and saying, you know what, certain things, we shouldn't be doing them. Let's do the environment correctly. Let's allow private sector to take the risk on its own. We'll come back and pack them up. Mwene Zimbeki, a policy evaluation here. Obviously, all these funds are designed to support various mechanisms of job creation driven by various departments and state-owned enterprises. Are we starting to see clarity around the new growth path and its broader aims? Are we starting to see how industrial policy will direct some of these objectives? Are we seeing the Treasury respond to very clear macroeconomic objectives? I think for me, I find that a very difficult question to answer, to tell you the honest truth. Uh, I see good intentions on one side, but these are not matched by practice on the other side. Uh, I was, like I said, I was very impressed by the finance minister's presentation, the thinking behind it, the philosophies behind it, uh, and what he's planning to do with it. It all looks wonderful. But at the same time, there's a court case in this country about allocation of mineral rights. So. I talk to investors both in South Africa and internationally who invest in, in the South African mining sector. If we are going to say we're going to create, we want to create jobs, mm -hmm. one of the biggest parts of our economy is of course mining as well as the, 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 the downstream industries that are related to mining like steel manufacturing and all the rest of it. But we, we are hobbling the, min, uh, the development of our mining industry Right. through a legislative environment right. that creates a lot of uncertainty. Lula, I, can see, I can see you want to say something there. I mean, okay, mining uh, is, a, is a bit of a controversial issue, but manufacturing, mining, tourism, uh, renewable energies, those are clear sort of focal points here. That clear focal points, but they need the government to move on their policy. For example, on the renewable, we talk about refit. Uh, this thing we're discussing the whole of last year, and then the government said they'll have something by April. Appearance going to come is about uh, <laughs> six weeks away. So we'll see whether they come up with. We've got independent power producers who are ready to take action to move to support government to succeed. I want to quote you one thing around the tension between the new road path and what the minister said, if I may quote. Improving household consumption and extra investment will support an increase in economic growth over the medium term. Real GDP growth is projected to reach 3.4% in 2011, 4.1% in 2012, and so on. Steady employment gains of about 2%, 2% a year. Rest my case.